Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I would like to talk about an interesting paper that we recently published in Modern Pathology Journal. And the article title is Enrichment of Cribriform Morphologies, which includes intraductal and cribriform adenocarcinoma and genomic alterations in radio recurrent prostate cancer. So to give you some background, Radiation therapy is an important form of primary treatment modality for clinically localized prostate cancer. But when local recurrence occurs after radiation therapy, it is frequently associated with substantial morbidity and mortality. So specifically, morphological and molecular consequences that may contribute to radiotherapy resistance and local recurrence remain poorly understood. So in this particular study, we try to address the morphological and molecular characteristics of locally recurrent prostate cancer tissue following radiation therapy in order to understand factors that may contribute to the development of radio resistance and the risk of biochemical relapse and metastasis. So we had a very interesting cohort uh, in this particular study. Uh, this is relatively uh, rare cohort. Uh, we had 53 patients with a diagnosis of clinically localized prostate cancer who failed with primary radiation therapy and then subsequently underwent a salvage radical prostatectomy as an intent to cure with or without additional androgen deprivation therapy. So we these were the basic uh, cohort of this salvage radical prostatectomy samples. And then we looked at the, all these radical prostatectomy specimens for tumor focality, clinical pathological features, and molecular and genomic characteristics. We, uh, sam uh, we had 10 representative radio recurrent uh, representative samples with match adjacent benign prostatic tissue that we analyzed using targeted next generation DNA and RNA sequencing platform with full exon coverage of 1,425 cancer-related genes. So here are some findings. This is the pathological characteristics of 37 patients. So of these 53 patients, 37 patients did not exhibit any morphologic evidence of treatment effect. And that's the group we went after to understand uh, the particular features that we look for in a post-radiation therapy setting. Uh, so first is that we see that uh, these patients had a locally advanced disease, high grade group, so over 70% with grade group three or higher, 78% had extra prostatic disease and 8% had lymph node metastasis. Another very important finding that we saw was there was an overrepresentation of cribriform morphologies with over 80% of samples demonstrated cribriform morphology, which consisted of either cribriform prostate cancer pattern 4 or intraductal carcinoma with a median percentage of approximately 80% of the tumor volume. So very, very much kind of enriched samples. And if we compare this data with uh, clinically localized hormone naive prostate cancers from these two studies, Cancer Genome Atlas study and Canadian Genome Network Project study, they had reported frequency of these morphologies in 31% and 38% of cases respectively. So in comparison to these, there is a clearly overrepresentation of cribriform morphologies in our cohort. Another very interesting finding is that typically clinically localized prostate cancer, when you examine in radical prostatectomy, it is a multifocal disease made up of multiple different separate tumor nodules. But in this cohort, we saw that majority of tumors were unifocal. Uh, when there were more than one tumors, uh, the non-treated or a tumor without any treatment effect were kind of restricted more in the dominant or index tumor. So I think this finding tells us that I think these tumor clones that we see in post-RT samples likely represents a new tumor clones that have developed following resistant to radiation therapy. We also try to 
uh, find pretreatment information in this particular cohort. And we had pretreatment biopsy information available in 29, that is about 79% of patients. 16 patients had a pretreatment biopsy of grade group one. So these patients lacked any cripiform morphology at the baseline level. And when we look at the this post-RT cohort in these patients, there is a significant grade group progression that you can see. Again, over-representation of cribriform morphologies. And in this patient, again, as I said, 16 patients had no baseline cribriform morphologies, but in 81% of these 16 patients exhibited cribriform morphologies, either cribriform pattern 4 or intraductal carcinoma, suggesting that there is a uh, that suggesting that these subpathologies were not present or was not the dominant clone in a significant number of pretreatment samples. And that is a very important observation from uh, this study. Here is a representative tumor from index uh, tumor demonstrating radio recurrent prostate cancer, which is enriched in this cribriform morphologies. You can see some intraductal type morphology, which was confirmed with basal cell marker in some cases. And in this example, you see more confluent invasive cribriform prostate pattern 4. Here, the background prostate demonstrated radiation therapy effect. Next, we looked at the molecular characteristics of these sequence tumors. And one of the very interesting observation was that we had a significant proportion of cases showing defect in DNA repair pathway genes, which include mutations in BRCA1 and 2, PALB2, TP53, PALQ, PAN, CB, and BARD1. Overall combined, these genes were seen, one or other gene mutation was seen in total seven samples, that is 70% of frequency, and all these mutations were somatic in nature. We also see gain of uh, MYC oncogene in 8Q. ETS fusions were almost similar in frequency like clinically localized hormone naive prostate cancer samples. P10 was uh, significantly higher alteration in 50% of samples. There was also one sample with SPOP mutation and then PRIM2 and BRAF fusion. This uh, table shows copy number alterations, which were also frequent in these samples, particularly gain of, uh, particularly loss of, uh, 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 so sorry, particularly gain of 8Q, uh, gain of uh, chromosome 7, loss of 8P, uh, 17Q, 18Q, 13Q. These are some of the common and uh, associated genes are listed here. So there was overall a nucleoid population with higher copy number alterations. Overall tumor mutation burden range from 2.16 to 31.86 mutations per megabase with a mean of 6.77 mutations per megabase and a median of 4.18 mutations. And as you know, that tumor mutational burden is, is a somewhat a useful indicator whether these samples or these patient prostate cancers would be responsive to immunotherapy. So overall tumor mutational burden was not very high. One tumor had hypermutation with the 119 somatic alterations. All were microsatellite stable. So what are our implications of morphologic observations? We clearly observed that there is an over-representation of adverse cribriform morphologies indicating that this is a hallmark of treatment emergent aggressive disease, which likely develops from occult subclonal initial disease or a new clone following radiation failure. And that's a very important observation. There could be potential link to development of therapeutic resistance and recurrence. And in fact, to support this observation, recently it was shown that prostate cancer with cribriform morphologies have increased genomic instability, hypoxia, and over threefold higher levels of SLAP1 compared to this uh, without uh, uh, prostate cancer without these morphologies. So this indicates that these morphologies potentially play a role in developing therapeutic resistance. 
And these authors named this phenomenon as a nimbosus gathering of stormy clouds, where a constellation of these three parameters manifesting as an increased metastatic capacity and lethality. What are the implications of molecular observations? We noted presence of notable variants of clinical significance that have shown an association with progression to advanced and metastatic prostate cancer. We also observed potential targets for specific therapeutic interventions such as defects in DNA repair pathway genes, specifically deleterious mutations in BRCA1, 2, BARD1, PILB2, which have shown sensitivity to PARP inhibitors with an overall survival value fit in men with metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. KMT2 CD mutations have shown uh, sensitivity to PARP inhibitors such as Olaparib. That's another one we observed in a small samples. There is also biallelic loss of MAP3K1 is associated with response to MAC inhibitor and TP53 mutations may predict resistance to a new generation of AR-targeted enzalutamide or abiraterone therapy. So sequencing these samples may provide information related to some of these additional, uh, more effective therapeutic uh, interventions regarding these patients. So what are limitations? This study importantly is a retrospectively identified cohort. So all the characteristics that we, that we defined were retrospectively defined. Uh, we also had a lack of pretreatment biopsy archival tissue material as a paired sample to analyze pre and post treatment differences that may exist in relationship to morphology, tissue hypoxia and genomic landscape. So the information that we had is somewhat indirect because that was based on uh, reports and not uh, direct uh, archival tissue material, but still it provides a very helpful information. So the highlight of this study is that post artery failure prostate cancers are enriched in preperiform morphologies and exhibit targetable specific genomic alterations. They demonstrate unusual high frequency of these aggressive subpathologies in post-treatment samples, as well as demonstrate unifocal nature of the tumor at radical prostatectomy, suggesting that they represent resistant tumor clones that likely emerge through selective pressure and or RT-induced changes. An understanding of this phenotypic and genotypic characteristic of recurrent prostate cancer following radiation therapy provides an important insight into optimal patient management, such as providing the basis for early detection of DNA effect, uh, gene-related pathway, alter disease, and thus potential benefit of PARP inhibitors in treatment of uh, this uh, radio recurrent prostate cancer samples. So I encourage you to check out this article which is published uh, now online in Modern Pathology and will be soon will be coming in print. Thank you very much for your attention.